All right, welcome to the Boo Boo Club Sports NFL Podcast. I'm your host, J.M. Pilon, along, uh, along with the Boo Club Sports NFL analyst, Chris the Heater Garrison, uh, as well as Brendan the Captain Fleming. Oh, this is our second week. Uh, week two picks is coming up for you guys this week um, as well. Uh, we have here, we have uh, some sponsors. I'll get those out of the way right away. Uh, is it Rash Hot Home Hardware and Tweed? Is that how you say that name? Rashad. Chris Rashad. Okay. Rashad Home Hardware and Tweed. Uh, they have great prices and great service and great people to deal with. For whatever your projects you're looking to get done, uh, go to Rush Hot uh, Home Hardware and Tweed. They have the best supplies and, and also the best prices. Yes, All right, so, uh, gentlemen. How? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to talk about uh, Rashad. So Chris Rashad, he's a buddy of the show, actually. He's uh He's buddies with Dayfo, so he 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 runs the home hardware in Tweed. Great guy, uh, it's just a great place. Like for a little hardware store, they have everything in stock you need. Like you think you think you were in Kingston or something like that, looking at a spot like that. Those guys are the best down there. So check them out. Uh, how's everybody doing today on uh, after week one? Everybody have a good weekend and now uh, ready to jump into this stuff here. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Everybody's gonna everybody take that so one, but... <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought the heater was gonna take it over for sure. Uh, for you guys uh, watching, uh, he is wearing his Baker Mayfield shirt today. Um, for you guys listening, it is a beautiful black uh, number six sweater. It's very or it's shirt. It's very nice. Sorry, Flem. I thought you were gonna take take a stab at that one, but I guess I'll start. And uh, so, twelve of the sixteen NFL games this week, uh, <clears throat> the underdog covered the spread. So that's a big number there, fellas. And I uh, hope the listeners took our advice on the gold, silver, and bronze picks and the upset pick of the week. Yes, you guys uh, you guys were actually uh, pretty much bang on, I think. Were you not on that last week for your gold, silver, and bronze picks? Yeah, Garrison was four for four last week. So he wrote uh, Oakland as his gold, Cleveland as his silver, and uh, Philadelphia as the bronze, and his upset was the Dolphins. Uh, so he went four for four. I had Pittsburgh co- covering the spread against Buffalo that hit. I had Cincinnati, and uh, since I had my dog as well, I took KC as my bronze, and they uh, – <coughs> Oh, if Andy Reid would just kick a, kick a field goal, we'd be okay. But no, he decides to go for two when he's up four, so I don't get it. I don't know. I pretty much count that one to win. I should be four for four anyway. Pissed me off. I pushed on a lot of uh, tickets last week because uh, because Andy passed up on man. that extra point. Man. Man. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, that's the name of the game, right? And that's the joys of being back in week one. Uh, just NFL's back. I'm so excited. My wife is not happy. I literally stayed, stayed in the man cave all week, all weekend and watched some football, which is always good. We had college and uh, we had college and the NFL, which is great to have. So on that note, yeah, the Browns in week one, actually, a stat I heard today, one twenty-one and one in their last week, week one. And the last winner was Jeff Garcia as the starting quarterback. Wow. Now, did Jeff Garcia have hair? No, probably not. <laughs> Wow, that's actually that's quite the stat. Almost sounds like the Cowboys in the playoffs. I don't know. And what about your boy, Jameis Winston? 148 yards, fewest yards to throw five plus TDs in the Super Bowl era. I, hey man, that. that is that is amazing. And to watch him actually to watch him play was actually uh, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, looks like he is still in California on the beach. I don't know if he, if we he found out that week one was that last week, but he might find out by now. Oh, yeah. that quarterback rating was atrocious, 32.8. And I think if a quarterback hikes the ball and throws it in the dirt every play, their rating is 39.6, I saw today. So, <laughs> boys, we could have been better starting quarterbacks out there this week. Just hide us the ball, we'll throw it down on the ground, and, hey, give us that money too. Why not? Yeah, once you make it yeah, 40 in the year, I'll take it for sure. <laughs> Exactly. Well, I mean, I'm sure Kaepernick could have did better. I'm not too sure why we're not getting rid of him for Kaepernick, but I mean, that's neither here nor there. Now, do you guys do you guys see Aaron Rodgers running the whole season through Green Bay, or did this did he get traded before the that, that deadline? I think I he's not. He, I don't think he makes it through. I just think I think he's uninterested, and I think when you get to that point, you know, I think any any pressure situation is going to cause a, cause some friction between him and Lafleur and uh, and Gutekunst or whatever his name is, the GM. So. I don't know. I think I think he's trying to force his way out of town here. They wouldn't trade him in the offseason, but I think I think he's gone by week six. Yeah, I'd have to agree with Flem. Yeah, a lot of hands on the hips. 
Uh, there was one play he got sacked and he just kind of looked at his O line like, what, what the hell went, went wrong there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he played like dog shit. So, now did his O line give up on him with all the offseason drama? And, you know, I don't want to be part of the team. I'm doing Jeopardy. There was his O line like, you know what? Oops, here you go. You know, he only got by me. He's pretty quick. You know, if you lose a half a second, your quarterback's going down. Is that what kind of happened there, do you think? No, I don't think that's what happened at all. I think the O-line loves him. I think it's just a case that they lost their two best O-linemen in the offseason. They lost uh, they lost the center, Lindsay, Lindsay and then uh, uh, what's the name, Balaga, the left left tackle. He, he got injured late in, late in preseason, so he's done for the year. So they were without their two best linemen, uh, their two best pass protectors. So uh, the other guys have always been average. That line's caught has always been anchored on the left side there. And uh, I know I don't think they're – I just think they got subpar uh, subpar blockers in there now without their best two guys. Yeah, I agree. They, they're they missing uh, that back guard. Rarity or what? However, you pronounce his last name. Back to another, That's uh, what I meant. It was back to another left, left line. tackle. Sorry, no. That's what I meant to say. Back to yards, left tackle. Yeah. So. All right, boys. Anybody surprise you more than anybody surprise you over the weekend on how they played? Uh, I think- Kyler Murray looked phenomenal. Oh my God! Did he ever? Jesus, that guy. That guy looked like he was Michael Vick, uh, two thousand four. Uh, Madden. Like he looked almost unstoppable. Yeah, I'll take the other side of the ball in that game, too. I think the Tennessee offense looked terrible for a team that's supposed to uh, you know, pick up Julio Jones in the offseason. They have two huge wide receivers with A.J. Brown and Julio. The Cardinals, they're not a pass. For, you, know, like, they, you can throw against the Cardinals all day long, and they couldn't do it. So I'd be worried about that if I was in Tennessee. You know, uh, Tannehill and the, and the two wide receivers weren't clicking there, so I, that's some concern for me. Um, on a good note, I think New Orleans surprised me. I mean, New Orleans would go out there and you know, put a beating on Green Bay like that. Jameis Winston looks like he's uh, coming down those odds for MVP, buddy. It's true. They are now, yeah. But my, my surprise, honestly, and I'm not saying this, but it's Baker Mayfield and the way that the, the, the Cleveland Browns held themselves together and to see Baker out in the middle of the field high-fiving his team when they're getting off the field, it was a good game to watch. And it was, it was probably my favorite game to watch over the weekend. And I was just impressed with how, uh, how the Browns came out and actually played that, played that game against KC. Because when you have KC, you can almost mail it in. And if you get pumped, you're like, yeah, it's KC. You're all good. They, they, they were really amazing, and I was really happy for what uh, what Baker did. And it should be a good season for the Browns. I never thought I'd say that in my life, but it should be a good season for the Browns. They should have won that game, too. Like, they gave that game away against Kansas City. I don't know what the coach was doing not putting Chubb out there. Like, man, every time Chubb got the ball, he was running for five or six yards before he'd almost even get touched. And he only had 14 or 16 carries, played only 50% of the snaps. I mean, I think if they put Chubb in there and uh, let him milk the clock, I know we had that fumble in the third, but, I mean, I would have given him the ball, and I think they could have easily sealed out that victory. I don't think KC should have won that game. Yeah, I just think uh, the second half was uh, a complete different story than the first half. Uh, There's a lot of errors. Like you said, like the fumble by Chubb, that cost him. And then that punt uh, that yeah. he fumbled to. The well, that's the biggest so. one, yeah. That's on like the 10-yard line. Like that's a guaranteed touchdown right there. That's the seven, That's the game right there for sure. The hardest- well, that was the so yeah, yeah the, and Odell didn't play. So, well, looks like Odell's out again this weekend. That's what it looks like. It looks like he's probably not going to play on Sunday. Um, as well, I think that winning winning's a culture, and as the Browns have have got a couple of wins under their belt, they just got to learn how to win. And I think once they do, they're going to be they're going to be a pretty good team. Yeah, Anything else you guys want to cover? Do you guys want to start moving on to our uh, our weekly picks here? What about how good Stafford looks in that offense? Oh, I don't okay. know if you guys watched the game, but him and Cooper Cup, wow. Yeah, they're going to have a phenomenal year, I think. Those Dude, two do was... seem like they're, they're, in, they're in, you know, in sync right now. I think I saw in the, in the, the show that they, they're the first two to show up every morning. They're going over all these plays, you know, when to cut it, you know, on your option, when to go in, when to go out. And I think, yeah, those two guys are going to be lined up. Cooper Cup's one of the most underrated receivers of the year. If he didn't tear his MCL or ACL a couple of years ago, I think he'd be one of the top ten receivers in the league, or people would think that. So, He's the guy to look out for this year. He's sneaky good. I like it. Yeah, no, and I thought I thought they were amazing, and uh, maybe he should have left Detroit a long time ago. <laughs> well, that's a given. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, anything else you guys want to cover this week? Did you guys ha- did you guys watch the ESPN feed on with the Manning brothers at all? Did you guys see that? I only caught uh, highlights of it. I didn't see any of it, no. Yeah, got to love being in Canada, so we'll just skip right over the Mannings, <laughs> of course. Um, let's just, guys, let's get into it. I'm kind of excited. I want to hear your picks this week, and uh, I'm hoping that we can uh, continue the same success as last week. Last week, uh, I'm, I'm in a couple of pools. I'm in a suicide pool as well as a 
uh, pick and pull, weekly pick and pull. So last week I went nine and seven, which wasn't really the greatest. I want to thank the Bills for fucking me. Um, and I really hope that uh, I really hope that they choke. And I also want to thank Andy Dalton for being the quarterback that I said he was. Just too bad he didn't break his hip yet. Well, let's jump into Thursday night's game, guys. Thursday night game, we got the New York Giants, who seem to be blocking each other, uh, as well as the Washington football team. Uh, who do you guys like on this one? Guy that uh, did get a broken hip was uh, Fitzmagic. So yeah. <laughs> uh, he'll be out. So Taylor uh, and Henke will get the ball. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I see uh, the Giants have had trouble stopping the Broncos on third down. And they also fumbled in the red zone. Uh, or once again, Daniel Jones. So uh, he has trouble keeping that ball tucked in. Um, a division game. Uh, he's 4-0 against the, against the Washington football team. Daniel Jones is a starter for the Giants. So I'll take the Giants to win by a field goal. By a field goal. I'll take I'll go the opposite. I think this probably won't be a bet for me, but uh, I would take Washington even with the backup quarterback in. I think uh, Antonio Gibson, he's probably the best running back in that game. He's probably going to – he'll get the ball. He'll get 100 yards and a touchdown. I think uh, – I don't know. I think they do enough with Heineke in there to, to get it done. I think the, the big thing, as you said, is that Jones can't protect the football. So when uh, when that Washington D line gets going on him, if they, if they pressure him, which they're probably going to do all day – there's no O line for the Giants. I would think uh, the D line of Washington kind of kind of takes that game over, causes a fumble, maybe gets a touchdown. So I would take uh, I would take Washington by three, maybe four. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna break the tie. I'm gonna go with the, the football team as well. Uh, they are favored by three and a half, and I'll take them. I'll probably take them for a touchdown. I would think. I don't think I don't like the Giants. I don't think the Giants are quite there. Like you said, it's a weak O line, and uh, I think that I, I like Washington on this one for sure. A touchdown, JM. <laughs> I'll probably Steve, go touch. Eh? Well, wait till oh, guys wow. Five That's the vision I'll, I'll game, go, too. I'll go seven. Yeah, I'll go seven on that one. I got <laughs> I got a little faith in the Washington football team. All right, boys, looking now. Uh, that's the Thursday nighter. So there you go, guys. Um, now we're looking at Sunday. Sunday, uh, one o'clock, we're looking at the Denver Broncos at the Jacksonville Jaguars. And the Broncos are favored by six right now. I'm sure that line will move a little bit. Who do you guys, who do you guys like it on this one? Yeah, so I probably won't watch this game at all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's not a sexy game. It's not a sexy no. Game. Trevor Lawrence, uh, first regular season loss against Houston last week. He was thirty-eight and zero as a high school starter, thirty-one and zero at Clemson. Now he's zero and one as a Jacksonville Jaguar, and he threw three interceptions. So, oh. like I said, they were beat by Houston, who's supposed to have first overall pick. Denver beat the Giants. They lost Jerry Judy. Uh, Teddy looked actually decent. Uh, two touchdowns, 264 yards. I'd have to take Denver. Yeah, I'm on the same boat there. Trevor Lawrence better get used to losing because he's going to do a lot of it this year. So uh, that team didn't look All right. great. He didn't look great. I would just uh, – I would take Denver. And uh, Yeah, no, that's a clean sweep. It. Yeah, that's a clean sweep. It's the Broncos. Let's go on to a game I'll probably put on because I want to watch the Bills bend me over again. Uh, let's go Bills uh, Bills versus Dolphins. Bills are favored by three and a half right now. Who do you guys like on that one, Chris? Uh, so Buffalo's coming off a loss to Pitts, Pittsburgh. Uh, that was a story of two halves. Uh, the Bills couldn't convert on a fourth and eight and a fourth and one. And then after uh, not converting on the fourth and one, the Steelers scored the touchdown to make it 13 10 and then the bills went three and out and again uh they had a punt blocked for a touchdown uh josh allen hasn't lost in miami since his rookie season uh miami won 17 16 against the pats and uh their defense played well causing a fumble with three minutes left on their 11 yard line to seal the w i think the bills bounce back this week and Allen will look more like himself from last year, and the Bills win. Yeah, I'd be on the Bills' side for that one, too, just because I don't think Miami's going to get the pressure Pittsburgh did against Allen. Allen was kind of uh, – he was rushed all day in that game. He didn't really have much time to throw or get out, you know, or get out and scramble. It seemed like every time he took a step forward, someone would be right on him. You know, he'd get maybe a one- or two-yard gain or one- or two-yard loss. So, uh, I don't think the Dolphins can get enough pressure on Allen this week to uh, to stop the Bills' offense. So, I would take the Bills minus three-and-a-half. I'd probably even go up to – 
the five and a half or six on that. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna I'm with you guys. Another clean sweep. I'm gonna go with the Bills. Exact same reasons you guys. So I'm not gonna regurgitate everything. I'll let you guys sound intelligent. We'll uh, go from there. <coughs> Perfect. The next game I got on the docket here, guys. One o'clock game. Uh, the Houston Texans versus the Cleveland Browns. Browns are favored by twelve and a half. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I think we can all. Are we gonna watch this one? Is this the sexy game for you guys at one o'clock? Oh, I won't. Uh, I might turn it on i don't know we'll see uh, i think the browns win by 14 plus though the 14 plus i don't know i might be on i might be on houston for cover i haven't decided yet i mean the browns are obviously gonna oh. win Top, i don't know i just think it could get to the point trap, where, trap. yeah it probably is a trap yeah i just think it could get to the point where the browns are up so much at halftime that not even so much but if they're up by three scores they just run the ball the whole second half maybe tyrod takes them in for a touchdown or two and they kind of have a backdoor cover be my situation but uh cleveland's gonna win the game for sure Another clean sweep. I'm I'm gonna go with the Browns as well. Mayfield three plus TDs. Oh yeah, three plus TDs. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I, he's already calling. So he's calling his own number here, guys. You hear that? He's calling <laughs> his own number. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, on the one, the unsexy game of the week. We got the uh, the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Chicago Bears, and the Bears are favored by two and a half. Unsexy. So, I think this is a sexy game. I don't know. I like watching Joe Burrow play and just. Uh, I don't know. Well, if it's Burrow and Fields, it is. But if it's still QB yeah. one, and I don't know if I want, I don't know if I want to watch that game. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. I think you're going to get to the point here within the next couple of weeks that the Andy Dalton show's over. So, uh, and we're going to Justin Fields. So, I would take the Bears minus two and a half, and that's going to be one of my uh, one of my picks this week. I would think. Okay. Oh. There we go, Chris. What do you got going? What do you got on this game? Alpha. Well, I kept going back and forth on this game. Uh, Joe Burrow looks like he's just going to kind of be a clock management quarterback, you know. Yeah, they ran the ball, ball in some weird spots last week. Hey, eh? that was really weird. Yeah, really weird, and you know those quick little slants, move yeah. the chains, take about six, seven minutes off a drive. Well, did you see him uh, hurt the his bear- knee last week? Pardon? Did you see him hurt his knee last week? Like he got he got tackled once, I think, in the second quarter. And he came up limping real bad. And after that, that's when they kind of got into more conservative play calling. They started handing the, handing the ball off more. So he might not even be 100% healthy after last year. You know, he just uh, just off surgery. So Yeah, yeah I missed that. <laughs> yeah, and that O-line is brutal. So I think the Bears' defense can get to him. Uh, I think the Bears' offense, I think they'll hand the ball to Montgomery probably about 20 times. Again, they'll chew up the clock. Soldier Field is a – Always a tough place to play. That crowd will be going nuts. Since he has such a young team, and I just think the Bears defense will step up, so I'll take the Bears to win. Yeah, just I'm going to take the Bears as well. Just a side note, Montgomery's a great play in fantasy this week. He's probably going to get 100 and a touchdown, probably a little extra. So I think that's a guaranteed 20, 25 points in your fantasy football league. You stick him in there. Perfect. Yeah, guys, so that's that's what we're going with again. Chicago, I think, I think takes this. Two and a half. I think it's going to be a little bit more than that. I think it'll come down. And I hope Joe Burrow isn't injured. I really honestly don't. This poor kid, you know, coming from the great program and then getting injured. And then now if it's getting injured again, the, the, I don't even know. Maybe the Bengals should move out of Cincinnati. <laughs> All right, good. Next, next, I got a game I'm probably going to watch. I got the San Francisco 49ers versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Who do you guys like in this one? Yeah, so one of my bronze picks last week was the Eagles. Uh, and both these teams start the season 1-0. Uh, the Eagles look good on both sides of the ball, but again, against a very weak Atlanta team. <clears throat> Hurts and Smith hooking up for a touchdown. San Fran beat the lowly Lions. Uh, they lost uh, Raheem for the year, their running back. That guy cannot stay healthy. I don't think there'll be uh, many years ahead of him in the no, NFL. He's, I mean, he's only played like four games the last like three years. Like he's just a guy that can't stay healthy. He's just he's not. He can't. It's too much wear and tear as a running back, right? He's just he's done. Yeah. So, and that same with uh, that Jason Verrett, the cornerback. Yeah. He used to be a stud at TCU. He can't stay healthy either. Yeah. But uh, Debo, Debo looks great, and I, I think. Same Fran comes away with a win. What was the deal with I with Ayuk last week? Like why he had no catches. No, not even to get a target. You know what's going on there? Yeah, he was he was a ghost. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Debo's, you know, Debo looks like he's suddenly like the the wide receiver one in that show. So uh 
this is a tight game. I would probably pass on it in general for the week. Just uh, two kind of like middling teams. And I think you just kind of need to see a little bit more of where they're going. Like that got comeback from Detroit late last last week was really weird. So I would yeah. fade this game. I think the line's like pretty much perfect at 3.5. Uh, you know, I'd maybe take Philly to cover just, just to get the half point and save the field goal game. All right, I'm going to go with the 49ers as well. Same reasons you guys said. I just think the 49ers are a better team than, than Philly all around. So, as far as I'm concerned, Philly can go 0-18, and I wouldn't even care. I, I think I could see it high scoring. Those teams are going to, I think, score, both of them. I, Yeah. yeah, yeah I was going to say, yeah, it looks like the total for points is 50. Feel now, and that's the highest one at 1 p.m. So it could be a good – just put the defenses away and let's just throw the ball and see what happens. And if that's the case, I like Jimmy G. So, all right. Got anything else to add on that one, Chris? I got nothing, though. Perfect. All right. So then the next one I got on the docket uh, is the, uh, the Saints and the Panthers. Uh, and the Saints are favored by three and a half. What are you guys thinking on this one? So this is one of the better games of the week, I think, in my yeah. my opinion. Uh, it's your MVP pick, Jameson Winston, last week threw for five TDs, but uh, I don't see him throwing for more than two this week. Uh, that Carolina defense is a lot hungrier than that Green Bay defense. Uh, New Orleans lost Marshawn Latimer for a few weeks. Marcus Davenport might be out. I'm still not really a believer in uh, Winston, and I don't think he's got enough weapons around him. So, and Carolina coming off five-point win against the Jets. I think McCaffrey will eat up New Orleans. So, I think the Panthers win this game. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, this is – I think the line's perfect in this one, but uh, I think the key to this game is is how do they stop McCaffrey? I mean, that's the biggest weapon. Last week, I think he had – almost 100 and 100 again, 100 yards rushing, 100 receiving. Like, he was really close to that mark. So, I think New Orleans does everything they can to slow down McCaffrey, and I think they take this game. I think the Saints can win by four or five. Like, I don't know. I don't think Carolina looked that great last week. Like, they, they got by the Jets. You know, they probably should have won by 10. But, I mean, Wilson didn't look as good as – you know, wasn't as good as advertised last week. So, uh, I don't know. I think I think the win for the Saints last week was way more impressive than Carolina. So, I'd take the Saints, Saints minus three and a half. Yeah, I'm going to take the Saints as well. And I don't see Jameis Winston ever getting five touchdowns again through the season. Like you said, Chris, two, t- two TDs probably on average for him. But I also see him getting maybe maybe just over 200 yards this game, I think. But I think I, I think the Saints will win on this one pretty hands bet, down. Bet you Joe Horn's kid picks off Jameis Winston. <laughs> I, bet you Winston go, I bet you Winston goes over 200 yards too. I'll take 20 on it. Okay. You got a deal. I'm done. All right, over two hundred, two hundred. Over two hundred, two hundred. Under? Are you going over or under on the two hundred? Over. Oh, uh, hmm. you laid the two hundred. <laughs> yeah, two hundred. Yeah, I, well, you know what? I like that over though, because I think he could. <laughs> I'll right, take I'll the. Let's... I'll take. I'll take the under for two. I just okay. want. I want a little scratch. I'll take the under for two. Sure. I'll take the under. Perfect. All right, guys, let's go with the uh, another good game: the LA Rams versus the. Uh, Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Rams are favored by three and a half right now. What are you guys thinking on this one? I think uh, this this one for me is going to be a tricky game because I think, you know, the the Rams come out looking sexy after last week, but they did just play Chicago. The tale of this game going to me is, is what Indy shows – what Indy O-line shows up this week. They were god-awful last week. Like Carson Wentz was running around for his life. I think he got hit 14 times. And coming into the year, what their O-line should have been their strength. Like I think they were – three or four on the O-line last year, DVOA. So, I mean, the O-line should be much better. If the O-line plays like they did week one, you can take the Rams minus three all day. I think that's an easy pick. Aaron Donald's going to eat them up. If you get the Indianapolis Colts line of last season, I think we got a different game and, and, and things could interesting at that point. So that's the big key to me. That's going to be watching uh, Indy strengths, that O-line. Uh, the Rams strength is their D-line. So we'll see how that matchup plays out. Yeah, fun. A stat that I found hilarious was he was sacked three times for 28 yards. Like, (laughs) Carson, throw the fucking ball away. Christ, man. (laughs) I know. He just, he holds it forever, right? He he never, he never gives up on a play. That's probably why he's been hurt so much. Yeah, just get rid of the He also just, he takes too many pumps. Pump, 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 pump. Mm -hmm. And then he throws to his target. Anyways, 
So I'll get into this game a bit. We uh, Fun brought up how Cooper Cup and uh, Stafford show up to breakfast together in the morning. A little bromance growing in L.A. Mm-hmm. Carson Wentz didn't look too much shit. Uh, the defense of Indy got torched by the Seahawks, so I don't see things getting any better for the Colts, so give me the Rams to win. All right, yeah, and I'm just going go, to go with the Rams too. What about the spread? Well, the spread's only three and a half. Is what it only three and a half now? Last time I looked at four. I got it four too. All right, I'm oh. just going Give me the Colts then, plus yeah. four. But plus I'll take four. I'll take the Rams. Yeah, I think so. I would take the Rams. Win. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Rams as well. Uh, I just I don't see them losing to the Indy. I don't see I don't see that team losing to Indy. They this lost to the Jets last year, Jam. That was last year. Last year. <laughs> that was last year, Flynn. If you're gonna go by last year, like just think about our Leafs, man. They lost to the Habs, so I mean, we won't even go there. But I mean, that's what it is, right? And it's la- that's last year. They're not gonna let that happen again. You're not gonna lose to the goddamn Jets twice because I say that. Watch it'll happen, and that's it'll screw me again. So okay, so we're good with uh, what do we got? Rams, Rams, and Rams. I guess right. Another clean sweep. Uh, what's this? Uh, two, one, two, one o'clock games left. The Las Vegas Raiders off of their impressive overtime, uh, versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers favored by five, five and a half. What do you, uh, what do you, what do you think on this one, Chris? So, the one and oh, Las Vegas Raiders head on the road to Pittsburgh to face the one and oh, Steelers. The Steelers beat the Bills on Sunday. The offense behind Big Ben didn't impressed me that much big ben is old and washed up i think the o-line looks like they're gonna have some trouble this year opening up holes for Najee harris the defense for pittsburgh didn't really get much pressure on allen in that first half second half was a different story um vegas was down 14 to uh to the ravens and never gave up Max Crosby had a huge game on defense. That guy is a stud. Stud. Absolutely. And Carl Nesbitt, who just recently came out as homosexual, which is good for him, uh, had a number of big tackles and one sack, forced fumble in overtime. Uh, Josh Jacobs is banged up. Uh, Waller is a monster, and he is headed, I think, to the Hall of Fame. Like, did you see how many – targets he had Flem, like oh, yeah. 20 or 19 something ridiculous every time you looked over he was in the middle of the field running an option route yeah he was the target on 70 percent of their pass plays it was crazy and he make made the play pretty much or 50 percent or more of the time yeah uh, i think the defense will be able to stop big ben and car will have enough time in the pocket to hit those young receivers so give me with the upset the Raiders. Money line, oh. eh? I would Look take the money line, I believe. Yep. So, yeah, I would be on the ops this one because I would take Pittsburgh with the points. I would take Pittsburgh minus five and a half. The reason why I say that is because last year Pittsburgh was number one in defending the tight end uh, on pass play. So, I think they key in on Waller this week. That's the biggest weapon for sure. Carr's looking there, you know, 60. Every time he drops back, Waller's got to be one of the primary reads. So, uh, I think Pittsburgh gets enough pressure on Carr, and they do enough to take away Waller that I think they can. Uh, I think they'll win by a touchdown. I don't think it's that much an issue. I think coming off a Monday night game, a lot of emotion in that game too. So uh, yeah, give me Big Ben and uh, his weak little arm. They uh, they showed in the fourth quarter that they got more than just Waller though. For them Jones, yeah, no, no they Edwards. Have, I don't know. Pitt, you're, Pittsburgh's one of the best defense in the league, though. Like I think Pittsburgh, can, you know. Pittsburgh can rush the quarterback. You say they didn't get much pressure on Allen last week, but they were kind of like more surrounding the pocket as opposed to like going right after him, like trying to keep him in throwing mode, cut try to stop from running. So I don't know. I think I think the Pittsburgh defense is going to be too much for Derek Carr. I just think they're gonna they're gonna key on Waller and that's gonna be it. He does have some other weapons, but I don't see them being enough. Like Pittsburgh's got some weapons too with with Claypool. They got Juju, they got uh, Deontay outside. So I don't know. Yeah, that that's my reason for going to Pittsburgh. 
I'm going to go Pittsburgh, but this could be a trap game. I don't know. This could go either way. The five, the five and a half, I think to me is a trap. But I mean, I like Pittsburgh in the second half. So against Buffalo, so I'm going to take Pittsburgh again. I'm going to take the gamble and go with Pittsburgh. But I like the, I like the idea of the upset though on that though. That's nice. It's a good upset to call. But I'm going to have to go with. Uh, I'm going to go with the Steelers on this one. I just I think uh, the Bills didn't really show up either in that second half. Like they look like shit. Yeah. So. The Bills were out in the parking lot sullying with uh, with those idiots that are breaking tables and stuff. So I mean, that's what it, it is. What it is, and then the Bills the Bills are what they are. And I hope the Bills can learn from that week one collapse, and hopefully they don't repeat. History does not repeat themselves on that one. I got one more. I got one more on the one at uh, the one o'clock, guys. I got the one that everybody's looking forward to: the New England Patriots versus those goddamn New York Jets. Uh, Flem, who do you like it on? Who do you like it on this one? Yeah, I'm not going to be too interested in this game. Like, I'm not very much in the Jets. I would just say Bill Belichick comes up with a plan to shut down Wilson. So uh, I take New England money line and probably New England minus six. Flip, you mean you won't have your surround sound on just to listen to the J E T S Jets, Jets, Jets? The Jets won't make it on my TV much this year. Even when they play the Bills, I probably would uh, probably skip for something else. What? You don't want to look at GQ model Zach Wilson in the. Zach Wilson's mom is the attractive one. Is she, is she the is she the attractive woman? I I thought it was his girlfriend, was it not? I don't I think know. it was his I think it was his mother. It was his mom, yeah. If his mom's out there, if his mom's at cheerleader home pom poms, I'm watching it all day. <laughs> <laughs> um I was impressed by Mac Jones last week. I thought he was probably the best looking rookie quarterback out of them all. Mm-hmm. Stands in the pocket makes a quick decision, scrambles if he has to. So I was pretty impressed. That defense for the Pats, too, looks to be one of the top units in the NFL. And they were missing uh, Stephen Gilmore, I believe. Uh, if Harris doesn't fumble in the last three minutes, the Pats probably win that game. Yeah. Uh, the Jets look like the New York Jets. Uh, Zach Wilson didn't play too bad, but he's got mediocre. no weapons. He's got no weapons. No, like, that's a problem. Well, the Jets have never the Jets have never had any weapons. Let's get that straight here, boys. Yeah. So, Bill Belichick is twenty-one and five against rookie quarterbacks since he took over in New England. Uh, I don't think Wilson would be able to do much with against that Pats D. So, Mac Jones and Damian Harris should do enough on the offensive side. So, Pats. Yeah, it's a clean sweep. The Pats are the Pats are going to take this all. Uh, I don't see them. I don't see the. Yeah, there's no way I can see the. I can see the Pats losing this one. Um, okay, that's it for the one o'clock games. Flem, uh, you have a read, I believe. Yeah. So uh, another sponsor of uh, the the show of Boot Club Sports and Pay It Forward Sports is uh, BIHC, uh, Belleville Integrative Healthcare Center. So these guys are uh, their healthcare center. They're multi focused, so they'll do uh, physio, chiropractic work. They'll treat you for like tennis elbow, uh, anything you need. If you're in pain of any way. Go see these guys at BIHC. They're on Bell Boulevard, Belleville. Uh, ben, the owner, he's a great guy and always does what he can to uh, give back to the community. So uh, if you're in any pain, honestly, check these guys out. They're honest. Uh, they're going to give you whatever you need. If, if you if you say, you know, I need one session, I need four sessions, they're going to they're gonna do what they can do to get you better. And, uh, yeah, give them a call, BIHC Belleville. All right, that's not too bad then. So if you're and if you're hurting from all those old football, high school football injuries, go see those guys, and they'll be able to fix you up, uh, fix you up as best as they can. If you're not broken completely like myself, <laughs> um, let's uh, let's jump on to the uh, the four the four o'clock games here. Let's. Uh, I don't think I, I liked last week's four o'clock games are really interesting. Um, this one's got a couple, but I don't know if I. How many of these? Which ones I'll be watching here? We have the Vikings versus the Cardinals, and the Cardinals are favored. Uh, what's it four right now? Who do you guys, uh, Chris? Who do you like on this one? So the Vikings start the season zero and one with that questionable fumble uh, that, with Dalvin Cook. I don't think it was a fumble, but anyways, Flem does. JM, we were on opposite sides of that one last week. Watching it, like we both, like I would, I won a lot because the Bengals, but Chris would have won a lot of mini ones. So uh, we were texting. <laughs> it was an awkward text conversation for a little bit, actually. Because fucking, anytime, anytime the bike could do something good, he would say something. I'd be all fucking pissed, and then same thing. I'm sure the other way. So <laughs> pulling your phones out of the drywall to reply to text messages as you're chirping each other. Yeah. Exactly yeah. how exactly how it should be, boys. <laughs> it's it's all good though. But oh, anyways, yeah. that. Uh, 
that D just looks like the same old Vikings D. Uh, Kirk Cousins looks like the same old Kirk Cousins. Um, Arizona dismantled Tennessee, and Murray had MVP-like numbers. Uh, the defense, Chandler Jones had five sacks in a contract year. Uh, J.J. Watt adds that much more worry to that for an O-line. So I, I think Arizona wins this game. Yeah, I would say Arizona too. And the one big thing I took away from Kyler's performance last week is, is he didn't necessarily run the ball. He threw for four touchdowns. Like he's more of a guy that kind of gets out there and scrambles. Usually he'll throw for two touchdowns and run for one in. Man, that guy was in the pocket. He was calm, making good decisions. And he tore that Tennessee secondary apart. He got two touchdowns to Hopkins. So uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I was on the Bengals last week as my upset pick just because I, I don't think Minnie's a good team. Like they don't have the same defense they had in those Case Keenum years before they brought Cousins in. So Cousins was supposed to be the answer with that defense. And then I think his contract really stripped them apart. So give me Arizona and I take Arizona minus three and a half. I don't like laying points with the Cardinals usually, but I think I'll take it on this one. Yeah, all right, guys. I'm with you guys. I'll take the cards as well. I just looked – Kyler Murray just looked video game-esque last week, and it was amazing to watch. Watching the guy run and just throw a quick bullet in, you're like, how can you stop that? You can't. Mm-hmm. You just got to hope that you're in the right spot and you hopefully that the refs don't call a penalty on you. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to add on that game? I think the slow Kyler – like, I don't know. If you can go and get Kyler in fantasy right now, go and get him because that guy's a stud. Uh I think the only way you got a chance with Kyle is you hope he, he hope he wears down throughout the year and hope he gets hurt come week thirteen. I got I got a question. Sorry, what, sorry, what, what, what? Hang on. What 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 fantasy league are you playing where that guy's available? Because if that's the case, I want well, to join. Your I'm talking. Leagues. I'm talking trade, Jay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to sell sell go sell the farm for Kyler. Go give like Zeke plus up for Kyler. <laughs> Zeke. Um, what about what about during the draft when the guy takes Kyler and you just blow up his phone with telling him he's trash? <laughs> Well, I'm just trying to set you up. You did miss your third round pick because you were just texting me trying to explain what you were doing. So in our fantasy league jam, we were in like an 18 team league and Garrison steps up in round two for Kyler. So uh, that was pretty, it was pretty ballsy that early. That it wasn't going to come back to me for a while, right? Because it's snakes. Oh, no, no, so yeah, yeah. I had to take a quarterback. Yeah. No, that sounds like a genius play out there. That's exactly how it sounds to me, guys, as, I've, I've got, as being I've got, the. Who do you got? Who, who's your quarterback? No, I've got Kyler in all my fantasy leagues except the one I'm in with Garrison. So, <laughs> typical, typical crybaby over here. Yeah, I know. All right, guys. <laughs> next game: Atlanta, uh, the Atlanta Falcons versus the Bucks. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Does anybody is anybody taking the Falcons on this one? Uh, fun, you think? Not a chance. There's no way. I mean, what's the what's the spread at? Like twelve and a half? I don't know. I, I think that's, I'm looking at it now. It's twelve and a half. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh, you made me pick. I wouldn't take Atlanta to cover. So, I mean, I think Brady's going to – so we have – I think we have 100 on Brady being thrown over 50 touchdowns. So we got four last week. I'll say he probably gets five this week. Like, uh, Brady, somebody, might, Brady might be at 10 by the end of this hip. week. <laughs> oh, Brady, somebody breaks his hip. He's too healthy. He lives the vegan lifestyle. He's clean. No, Nothing's breaking that hip. Look at that guy. Did you see that guy compared to what Aaron Rodgers looks like? I know. Aaron Rodgers looked like he got hit by a truck. It doesn't look like he was in Hawaii. <laughs> he looked yeah, like Jay, yeah, Rodgers Rodgers looked like he's depressed. He, I think I don't I think he's just back for the money. I honestly think like he's pissed off now that Jeopardy Jeopardy was a miss and now Jeopardy's open for him. I think he's pissed off. He's like I am pissing away my after football career. So I think Aaron Rodgers is depressed and Tom Brady is living the dream. He always has been, but now he's living the dream. I mean Tom Brady's looking great out there. So yeah, I'm probably gonna owe you a couple, but a couple bucks, but probably by by fucking middle of this season. Fuck sakes. Yeah, well he's got he's got he's got Atlanta twice coming up here soon. So uh that's at least ten in those two games, I would say. Fuck off. Put up four. Right? Brady. So I might have to agree with you. Yeah, he's... against that brutal defense. That defense oh, yeah. is gonna be one of the worst in the NFL. Man, if Jalen Hurts can throw for like 265 on you, Tom Brady's going to go for 500. Like, whatever Tom Brady wants and whatever they let him do, that's what he'll get. If they decide it's a passing game, he'll go for 500, 550. I'm sure by the fourth quarter, they'll be handing the ball off. They'll probably like the third quarter. And Antonio Brown looks like Antonio Brown of the Pittsburgh Steelers past. Antonio. He looks good. Oh, dude, and he was smiling, having a good time. It's almost like all the all the previous BS with him is gone, and he looks like a brand-new player. It's amazing to see 
and you say you say Antonio Brown looks like the Antonio Brown of old. Chris Godwin looks like the Antonio Brown of old. Like man, Godwin and uh, Antonio Brown as your one two receivers, kind of on. They both kind of play the slot or the outside. Evans kind of takes that outside role, and you know he got no real looks last week. Like if Mike Evans is your third receiver, I I would say Godwin's the number one on that team right now. Like the guy had 14 targets last week. He's gonna have a huge year, and he's sitting on my fantasy team in our uh, our league of record. <laughs> You let uh, you let Godwin uh, write his own book, all right, Flem? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's not no Antonio Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. All right, guys. So I'm just going to assume everybody's taking the bucks on this one. There's no upset here, I don't think. Yeah, well, Pitts looked in- invisible last week. Yeah. Uh, Tampa lost Sean Murphy bunting. I don't think that really will hurt them this game. Uh, the bucks are loaded. Give me the bucks to win. Yeah, all right, we're all in the same boat. Let's jump on to the uh, Cowboys and Chargers. Oh, my team, my team, my team. <laughs> all right, so it looks like my my pick so far of the uh, Cowboys going not winning a goddamn game is going to come to fruition again uh, <laughs> this week. Uh, I got the Cowboys. I have the Cowboys winning, and then uh, I set my picks in for the week exit to be in. And then Demarcus Lawrence gets injured with a broken foot in practice. And it looks like the DN position is now going to be needed to be filled. So with that, I, I still think that it's only three. It's only three points, but I think the Cowboys are gonna they're gonna lose on this one. Glenn? So you're taking the Chargers minus the three. I eh? see that's yeah. I don't know. This is a this is a tough game for me. Lawrence does change a lot because if there's one thing the Chargers can do on that O-line, it's pass protect. They've built the kind of the line to, to protect uh, Herbert. I'm still going to say the Cowboys just have more weapons on offense than the Chargers, though. I would take uh, I would take Amari Cooper, uh, Zeke. Like, man, they didn't give Zeke the ball hardly at all last week. I know he got stuffed, but they just have too many weapons. Dak looked like he's uh, he's hooking up with CD. So uh, give me the, the Cowboys plus three. And I will take the Cowboys money line on my upset of the week, too. It's it's three and a half, so that's better news for you, Flem. That's not what 365 says. I'm, lo- I'm on I'm it right not- now. It says three and a half, no? Yeah. So it already, it already moved. moved. So I got wow. in at three then, bud. <laughs> yeah, it's at three and a half. Anyways. Okay. Yeah. So I like the three and a half. I take Dallas on that. I do agree. I think they got a lot of weapons. Zach Martin's coming back. Uh, Zeke looked invisible last week, but I think Zach Martin will open up the hole for Zeke to kind of get a few more yards on, on those totals. Uh, this game's tough. Cause I think Justin Herbert, we, we saw last week how well he looked composed in Washington with fans. Now he's at home with that crowd noise. He'll be amped up. I think. So I think the Chargers win the game, but I, I'd i take the Cowboys to cover. All right, so there we go, guys. Uh, the next 425 game is the Tennessee Titans versus the Seattle Seahawks. Who do you guys like on this one, Chris? So Tennessee goes on the road to one of the loudest stadiums in the NFL. Henry looks to rebound, which I think he'll be able to against that D line of Seattle. I think he'll be able to put up a hundred plus yards. Um, Russell Wilson was doing some cooking against the Colts. And I think that will also do some cooking against the Tennessee defense. I think this will be a high scoring affair. I don't trust Tannenhill on that new offense just yet. The new offensive scheme. So I got to take Seattle to win. Yeah, and what well, you said about Russ cooking is when, when Russ is cooking, he usually cooks for like three or four weeks straight, right? Like when that guy's hot, he'll he'll give you a good five, six weeks even. So I would say uh, Seattle pretty comfortably money line. I think Tennessee can do enough to keep it close against the spread, though. Like I think, I don't know, Seattle always plays those games. It kind of comes down to the last the last series. Like, you know, even if they're up 14, they'll let, you know, they'll give them 10 points in the fourth quarter and they'll come down to a field goal or something like that. So I would take Tennessee money line, but I'd say – Seattle probably wins pretty relatively comfortably. Yeah, I think we're all in the same boat there. I like the Seahawks to win, and I just think uh, Westbrook. Westbrook, wow, my bad on that one. <laughs> Wilson looks great. Uh, I think I think he's going to have a great season as he always seems to do. Um, let's go on to the Sunday nighter. Uh, this is a game I cannot wait for. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Baltimore Ravens. 
Uh, looks like Chiefs are favorite three and a half. Uh, Flem, who do you like on this one? Gold pick, lock it in. Don't even think about it anymore. Kansas City minus three and a half all day long. I think the Ravens got exposed for what they were last week. They are they are not a great team. Like they can't run the ball. Uh, they're not a great. They're not great throwing the you know throwing. If you can contain Lamar, which I think Kansas City will do everything they can. I think Kansas City puts up at least 31 points against this defense, and I don't think Baltimore can keep up. So Kansas City minus three and a half. That's a lock. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you, Slim. Uh, yeah, they got no pass game, no run game. Lamar was supposedly worked on his accuracy in the off season, but <laughs> fuck, that guy couldn't hit a fucking. No, he could hit the broad side of a bar. Like he looked, he looked horrible. Anyways, and he just runs and tucks it in, and then he fumbles the ball. So yeah. the defense, I think they'll be all right, but I think Casey will be too much. I. I heard a stat today, Mahomes, 13-0 and 0 in September. So just add it, add another tick to the win column, make 14-0. and 14-0, and look at that. Look look what Kansas City is against the spread, like, the last 18 games. I bet you they're only, like, 2-16 and 16 the last 18 against the spread. Like, they don't cover many games. So the field goal is a scary thing. Like, last week they still – I'll cry about it again. They didn't cover by one point. So, uh, I don't know, they're just, they're just monsters of finding the ways not to cover. So – it can happen, but I don't know, man. I just – I don't see Baltimore putting up enough points to keep up with them this week. Like, Baltimore, when their defense was on point, like when it was three years ago when they were lights out defense, they still couldn't stop Kansas City Mahomes as a rookie. So, they're not going to do it now. No, yeah, I, I agree. And uh, Hollywood Brown's out too, or Is possibly he out. out. Okay, he missed yeah. practice today. So, mm-hmm. that's a big weapon for uh, Lamar to miss. That's his main weapon. Like, Well, yeah, and Andrew's yeah. – kind of looks like a ghost out there like yeah the connection they used to have a couple of years ago they don't have anymore so well i think people are onto it like people know that like they probably only have one or two routes in the route tree that they run and people are just you know andrews is going to go 10 15 yards and make that cut you know he's not right. going much deeper than that so i think people are just onto onto their game and they, they can't figure it out anymore and i mean they're going to bring in Lam- or uh I don't remember his first name, Murray from from New Orleans, coming to play running back this week. Davius, like, yeah, yeah. Davius Murray, like I don't know, that's that's not the weapon you need to beat Kansas City. No, no he's I, a big he's a big back that you give the ball goal line situation. Yeah, mm-hmm, but, he's not your main back. I agree with you, Flemia. Yeah. All right, so that's everybody on KC then. Perfect. Uh, anything else you guys want to add on to this Sunday's on the, the Sunday ticket at all? Anything else you guys want to maybe circle back and uh, check out? Anything of that nature? Not so much games, but I don't know about you guys, but is like when the the one o'clock games are ending, is that like the most stressful time of the day for you? Like it is for me. Like I'm just constantly like wa- trying to like find the score of like every single game going on. Like you're watching every play because man, in the NFL, like everything is so close all the time. Like someone's up by 14 points. All of a sudden, you know, Nick Chubb fumbles. You go for a touchdown. The punter fumbles and you know, the game's flipped off on the side. Like things just change so quickly in the NFL and it's so, so stressful to me. I'm just always thinking, you know, how are the one o'clock tickets doing and do I need to reload for four o'clock, I guess. Yeah, if I'm, I'm always pulling my hair out, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, no, I, anyways, I got the three TVs going usually, the laptop. I'm not too stressed. But I'm, I'm not going to miss a moment in one of the big games, especially when it comes down the last few minutes, because usually you have the first few couple games. Like usually that Bills game finished before – yeah a few of the others so you can catch the ending they usually yeah. play in that so you got to come over here sometime see all those tvs fired up it'll uh take a little stress stress away from your life love it need it yeah because last week i was watching the bills i was trying to watch the carolina game uh the Bengals game all at once like they were kind of on and then uh there was another one at one i was into too so i don't know just so much happened in those games just in such a tight time period. Like, like the block punt for Buffalo. Like, it just completely throws things on its side. Like, they go for it on fourth down. Pittsburgh scores a touchdown. Then they block a punt and get another one. Like, things change so quickly, man. Like, you think you're set on something and then just scripts flip quick. It's oh, fantastic. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. No, it's awesome. So. It's great, isn't it? Like, yeah, that's the best part. It's the best part when people start chirping you, like the bills yeah. were up. And then uh, one of my buddies messaged me, messaged the group at halftime and said, Oh, look, better than the Cowboys end up losing. I said, He never, he just shut his phone off. He literally yeah. left one of our group chats and was crying about it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's always good that way, right? 
All That's right, a guys. Rookie mistake uh, right there. It is never open your mouth. <laughs> never. As a Leaf fan, I know. As a Leaf no. fan, a Cowboys fan, I never open my mouth at all on this one. No. <laughs> all right, it's guys. Never over till it's over. Exactly. Now, guys, I want to jump into the Monday Nighter. Uh, the Monday Nighter, the Detroit Lions at Green Bay. Green Bay favored by 10 and a half. Um, I'm not a fan of this one, guys. This is my upset of the week. I was talking to the Voodoo Man, and the Voodoo Man thinks that the Detroit Lions are going to come out and win uh, against Green Bay. I think they're going to. I think they're going to win by probably a field goal on this one. This is my Detroit Lions are going to upset the Green Bay Packers. Well, are there like high school refs in this one, or what? I don't I'm know. I, JM, you leave me speechless again. Jesus, <laughs> dude, I'm telling you right. I'm telling you right now. Um, as it was, I literally never listened to this guy. I got a guy at work that was like the Voodoo Masters at it again. He says Detroit. He says Aaron Rodgers is done. He said he's not. There, there, there's, there's things coming out. The team's not happy. If Detroit can come out and try and get a couple of couple of quick points on this one, I think Green Bay may be in trouble. So I'm taking the upset of the Detroit Lions on this one, guys. I'd take the Lions if they were playing the little Giants, maybe. But Aaron, <laughs> but Aaron Rodgers is six and zero after a loss under Lafleur. Uh, he's not going to have another performance like that he did against the saints uh the offense and defense they both were flat that defense was really flat as you see winston threw five touchdowns uh the lions got beat by the 49ers but made it close in the end i just don't see the lions stopping rogers i see him putting up three plus touchdowns on monday night give me the packers in a blowout yeah, uh, tricky game. I'm kind of on a little bit of JM side. I can definitely see a cover coming for uh, for Detroit. I mean, money line. I don't have the balls to take Detroit. I mean, I just think. Look, last week with Aaron Rodgers, I mean, uh, New Orleans got tons of pressure on him. They were in his face all day. He was had to get him off his spot. Even with you know, we said there's lots of changes in the O line with uh, Green Bay this year. I don't think Detroit can get enough pressure on Aaron Rodgers to stop him. So I think uh, Aaron Rodgers hooks up maybe a couple of times with uh, with Devonte Adams for touchdowns. And that's yes, but I would say I would say Green Bay minus seven, minus ten in that range. I think that's how it's going to play out. Well, let's see what happens. I'm probably going to look like an idiot next week, but I <laughs> I'm going to go with the Lions. I'm going to put my neck out there, and I'm going to go with the the Lions. And I'm hoping they're going to they're probably they will cover. I can almost guarantee they're going to cover. But I'm going to say the whole upset. I think they're going to come out of this one with a W. You know what they say, Jam? You never want to be on the side of the public. I bet you the public's going to hammer Green Bay on this one this week. And uh, that's how Vegas makes their money. The public always piles on one side, and usually the other side hits. So I can see, I can see Detroit cover. Money line be ballsy though. Well, oh, let's see what happens. Real ballsy. Let's see how big your balls are, Dan. Yeah, I got, I got <laughs> big nuts. Now my wife says she carries them in her purse, but I mean, I've got them somewhere. I just got to find them here, boys. All right, boys, what are we doing here? Let's go with the. Uh, what do you guys got for your bronze, silver, and gold games? Go ahead, Gary. Go ahead, Slam. I'll let okay. you go. All right. All it's right. So, uh, you remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Four, so, so Chris, the heater Garrison is 4-0 <clears> and <throat> last week. Can he repeat that? And Flem is 3-1 and one with a crybaby tease, so he wants to go to 4-0 <laughs> and oh as well. But, Flem, it's not – so, like you said, it's not over till it's over. Once it's over, you're 3-1 and one and looking back at it. What do you guys – Flem, what do you got this week? So, uh, this week, I guess I'll start with my bronze. My bronze pick this week is going to be the Chicago Bears. I think, uh, I don't know, like we were talking about, it seems like they're concerned with Burrow. They're going to hand the ball off. So, I don't know. I think the Bears find a way to put up, you know, 27, 28 points. And I think their defense is good enough to, to hold the Bengals in check. So, give me the Bears minus two and a half at home. I think that's a, that's a safe one. I like Chris. it. And I'll go, I'll go with my bronze pick. And I'm going to go with the Las Vegas Raiders plus five and a half at the Pittsburgh Steelers. I just think they do enough to win the game, actually, and uh, keep it close. So I guess we'll see. All right. Uh, Flem, what is your silver? So what did we decide on the Cowboys line? Was that was that three or three and a half? I think we said three and a half, right? Yeah, so anyway, I think it was three and a half. Anyway, I've got it at three. I would take – if it's three and a half, that's an easy pick for me. So I would take the Cowboys plus three or three and a half this week. I think they have too many weapons up front. 
I don't think uh, I don't think the Chargers are going to get enough pressure. And I think I don't know the Cowboys in that offense. I think they showed last week they put up th- they put up 28 against Tampa. I think they can put up 30 against the Chargers. Can the Chargers put up 30? I don't think so. So give me Dallas plus three or three and a half for my silver. Yeah, and uh, my silver pick, I will go with the Tennessee Titans plus five and a half. I think uh, offensively they have enough to keep it close against Seattle. Um, I think Derrick Henry will punch in probably two TDs is my prediction. Um, so, yeah, give me the Tennessee Titans plus five and a half. All right, uh, if I'm a captain, who do you have as your gold pick? Gold pick, I gave this one out a little while ago, but it's the Kansas City Chiefs minus three and a half against the Baltimore Ravens. I think the Ravens were exposed last week. I think they got too many injuries at running back, at cornerback. Peters is gone. Oh, man, can't I know. I don't like to take, like I said earlier, I don't like to take Kansas City giving up points. They just don't seem to cover. But I can't really imagine a scenario where they don't cover the three and a half this week. I think that's as safe as a pick against the spread as you can get this week is Kansas City minus three and a half. Chris, who do you got? The heater is looking to go 8-0 again. Let's see what he's got. Or 4-0, I guess. I I have, as my gold pick, the Carolina Panthers, plus three and a half at home to the New Orleans Saints. I just think we'll see uh, the Saints, I think, losing Marcus Latimer and also uh, Davenport. I think that's a big, big two uh, losses for them on defense. I don't think you'll see the same game out of Winston. That young Carolina defense will be hungry. The crowd will be going nuts. I, th- I think uh, Sam Darnold has a lot of targets. Christian McCaffrey looks pretty good. So, yeah, I'll take Carolina Panthers plus three and a half. Perfect. Who do you guys got for your upsets of the week? My upset of the week, obviously, is the Detroit Lions. What do you guys got for the upset of the week? I'm going to stick with my uh, – the this, this worked last week as my silver pick, and I took it as my upset too. I'm going to take the Cowboys as my upset of the week. I think the Cowboys get it done money line against the Chargers. I hope so, too. It'll keep some flies off me. <laughs> Heater, who do you got? So I'm going to take uh, the, my upset pick of the week is the Carolina Panthers. Carolina Panthers. There we go. Panthers. Panthers for the upset. Panthers money line. I like it. This guy's coming to play this week. All right, boys. Anything else you guys want to add to this week's show as it is uh, week number two? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know. What, what game are you looking forward to the most this week, Jay? I'm like, which one are you, uh, are you not missing? I, I, I honestly, to be honest with you, I think Vegas and Pittsburgh, I don't think I, I don't want to miss that one. Um, and if I were to pick that, I'd probably go, yeah, Pittsburgh and Vegas. Uh, I hate watching Dallas because I, I, I do like that's the reason I have like a Peyton Manning forehead is just <laughs> rubbing it like this. And that's what I'm liking. And uh, the Kansas City and Baltimore, that's it. That's a no brainer. Sunday nighter. That's a no brainer. You've got to watch that game. I think it's going to be a great game. Yeah, and I what think are you guys Aaron, looking forward to? I think Aaron Rodgers in prime time is always something you got to watch, too. So Aaron Rodgers on a Monday night. I know it's not supposed to be the greatest game, but uh, I don't know. Interesting things happen on Monday night. So I'm looking forward to that Detroit-Green Bay game just to see. I don't know. I think that's one of the most – that is the most compelling story in the NFL this year is the Aaron Rodgers situation. How is it going to play out? Like, is every move – you know, like Chris said earlier, like a lot of hands on hips. Like, every time – everyone's got a story to tell about Aaron Rodgers. They're looking at his body language. They're trying to read what's going on. So – I don't know. I think the Aaron, Aaron Rodgers Green Bay storyline is just something I'm interested in this year, and I'm going to be watching that game for sure. Yeah, and I I think I'm going to be watching uh, – I like the KC Baltimore. I think that's going to be a dandy, the Sunday nighter. I'm not too much of a, a Lions fan, so I might turn on the Monday nighter since it's the only football game on. Just to see – let's see what Aaron Rodgers does kind of thing. Um, I'm with JM on the Raiders at Pittsburgh. I think that's going to be a dandy. And, uh, yeah, Tennessee, Seattle, I might yeah. throw on too. That might be a lot of scoring, so worth watching. Do you think if, Do you think Baltimore kicks an extra point in the game, or are they just going for two all game against Kansas City? That's kind of like the Harborough style against them. He's just going to – he's going to go for two-point conversions every chance he gets. Yeah, I don't – kick the, kick the fu- extra point. Well, I hate that too. They seem to, that's one thing I want to talk about. They seem to, uh, they went for it a lot on fourth down. Baltimore? No, like the whole oh. NFL in general, I found. Yeah. No, they did. Yeah. One, like this yeah, year. It changed, and it changed the game too. It changed the oh, game. Yeah. Look, look at the Buffalo game. Buffalo goes for it on like fourth and one, like their fit. Was it, I think it was in their territory. Like it might have been on the 50, like when they're up. And that, that completely flips the script of the game, right? 
And well, if you and if you're trusting if you're trusting your if you're trust, that means you're trusting your defense. And there's not, I haven't seen a lot of good uh, there's some good defenses out there, but not, the whole NFL is not all good defense. So if you're looking in your territory and you're looking at you know fourth and one, fourth and fourth and short, and you're going for it, you got a lot of you got a lot of balls in your defense. And I don't know, there's not a lot of defenses out there that I trust that much. Yeah, this isn't the NFL of ten years ago anymore. Like, there's no more teams just line up and pound the ball. Like, every single team can throw the ball pretty much. So. You know, if you give someone the ball at the 50, it's almost a guaranteed field goal. Like, there's not there's not too many three and outs anymore. Someone's going to get 10, 15 yards, kick a field goal. So if you're going for it, the, the risk is there, and it's uh, it's more real than ever. Yeah. Especially that's the it. Teams. Yeah, that's absolutely crazy. But hey, who knows? We got that. We got week two on underway, underway coming up, guys. I'm very excited for this week. Yet again, as I seem to get fired up for every week, right? But I prefer when we get down. My favorite's like Thanksgiving weekend, and then I like the end of it, the last three weeks, when your teams are jockeying for position. Just hope everybody can stay healthy out there except uh, the Red Rocket, and I hope everybody uh, has a good week, and I hope every team uh, does well. I hope it's, I hope they do. I really hope the Dallas Cowboys do pull a W, but I don't think they're going to. Yeah, so this is actually my uh, favorite time of the year, and I just want to bring up one story because – my stepmom passed away on uh, Monday from uh, a nine year battle with cancer. But uh, I just remember this time as a kid and uh, myself and my dad and uh, my stepbrother and stepsister, we go outside and we play a little football after the one o'clock games while she was cooking, cooking a roast, getting the potatoes ready, the gravy, you know, and then you'd come inside, you'd eat that meal and you'd watch Sunday football and then, you know, get ready for bed and watch Sunday, Sunday nighter. But anyways, that's just a little memory as I had as a kid. So I hope people that w- listen to this and watch it, I hope they do the same with their kids. Yeah. Okay. You, never, you never remember what you think back as a kid, like, you know, it's like, I don't know. I remember going and playing football, you know, with my parents or my grandparents, I guess, kind of uh, back in the, especially on Thanksgiving weekend. So yeah, just, yeah, for sure do that with your kids. But I think thanks, Thanksgiving weekend's got to be one of the, my, this, this time of year is the best time of year for me just because football's going, hockey's coming soon, but uh, Thanksgiving weekend might be the best time of the year. Like, I just – I love watching those three football games on Thursday. American Thanksgiving, at least. Yeah, so do I. I'll take it. I will take off. I'll make sure I'm on vacation for the, like, that day so I yeah. can sit down and watch football and enjoy myself. And, guys, don't forget, like Chris said, make those memories with your kids. If you're listening to this, man, and it's going to bring back some memories, guys, those are the memories we love. So I want to – those are the – I'm sorry, I'm with you. My dad was with hockey and, uh, you know – that was my key was that that's it's that's when it gets hard is thinking about those times. So if you have kids, guys, don't forget to make those memories as well. Don't just sit on the couch. Uh, enjoy our podcast. Um, look for us on YouTube as well as Spotify at Boo Club Sports, guys. Uh, with that, we're going to end the show here. Do you guys want to add anything else? No, uh, pay for golf tournament uh, October 9th at Trillium Woods. Uh, three spots left if you guys want to get in. The winning team goes to Caesars Palace in Las Vegas and uh, – the trip is booked at the same time as a Raiders home game. So maybe you get to go in and uh, see the new franchise play uh, at that nice new stadium. So pay for sports golf tournament, October 9th, uh, jump in. And uh, that's it for me, Jam. Perfect guys. I want to thank you guys for listening to today's show. I am JM, your host of the NFL, uh, NFL talk uh, for the Blue Club Sports, as well accompanying me is uh, Brendan, the captain Fleming, as well as Chris. Will he stay hot? Garrison, let's hope that he does for everybody else's sake. And I like seeing his smile, guys. That's it for this week, guys. Tune in next week for our picks as we discuss what happened and what is going to happen, guys. Don't forget to follow the boys and take their money lines as they're take take their gold, silver, and bronze as they have won uh the four and oh and three and one. So follow one other than the other one, and you'll probably make some money. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening again, and we will talk to you guys next week. Take care, stay hot, guys.